Hey everyone, this is Craig Reese here at South by Southwest 2023. Audiences are in their way to Topher Theater right now to check out the world premiere of Down Low. It stars Lucas Gage, Zachary Quinto, and directed by Ryder Doyle. All of them are here and they're all gonna stick around for a Q&A right after the film, so let's check it out. I'm so thrilled to be here in Austin. I think it's the right place for this wild, outrageous movie. Honestly, only wanted it to world premiere here because it's Austin's great. A lot of the movies that I looked up to the last couple years came out of South by Southwest, so it's just an honor to be a part of it and, and an honor to be accepted into it. I loved everybody. I think we all sort of felt like we were at uh, summer camp. After, you know, five nights of overnights, you kind of love or hate somebody. And this is, I think, the third or fourth project that Ryder, the director, and I have worked on together. So when he called me up to do it, I just jumped at it. It's a hilarious film. This film is about a deeply repressed man, uh, the uninhibited young man that gives him a happy ending, and all of the lives that they ruin along the way. So I play one of the lives that they ruin along the way. This is the funniest script I've ever read, and somehow I also cried at the end. And I felt a little embarrassed because I called Glenn and said, you literally can't not let me produce this. It was my first job after the pandemic. And so it was great to kind of come back and challenge myself in this way. I've known Ryder for a long time. And so I was thrilled when I found out that he was directing the movie and uh, it made me want to do it all the more. It was very provocative and it's very hilarious. And I was really drawn in by Lucas and Phoebe's languaging and their storytelling. And ultimately what I wanted to bring to it was a little bit more of that connected beating heart that I saw underneath it. We were watching a lot of rom-coms and then we were also inspired by old, older films like his Girl Friday and that snappy, quick-witted, fast-paced movies that we felt were kind of missing. And we watched a documentary about what Pretty Woman was originally going to be. And it was a lot darker before the studio got involved. And we kind of just were like, what if we did the dark version of that movie and made it queer? And then this crazy twisted baby came out of it. Ultimately, the movie is not moralizing. I think it's a it's two people who do some pretty good and some pretty bad things. And ultimately, the movie is not really judging them. It's really asking us what is human and what is good and how do you live your life. It's surprising. It's a very sexy, wild, crazy comedy. I want audiences to just sit back and go for the ride. No judgments, just have fun. And I guess I'll just start by saying there's so many other wonderful people who have worked on the movie that are here tonight. And if you are here and you worked on the movie, please stand if you didn't already leave. <laughs> See, no one. Um, and that's why I think I did it all myself. Okay, Janet, what do you want to do? Well, the, you know, I mean, it's funny. My, my question is so uh, ridiculous. It's like, how did you make it so good? You know what I mean? So I should try to pare it down a little bit, but it's comedy is so tricky. And this has razor sharp comedy, but with so much feeling. So, you know, I don't know how anybody can talk about that process, but, but I'm interested if you can. Yeah, I think it, it, well, it is a feeling and it is a taste level. It's something that we all talked about collectively for a very long time. And ultimately you just have to uh, trust the thing that you are making, trust the script that we worked on and the actors that we were working with, but ultimately I wanted the movie to have a slightly uh, sort of arch quality to it um, where anything can happen and the realist feeling is also um, sits right next to sort of the strangest like uh, you know, big, big slapstick moment. So we tried very hard to balance those things and everyone was so beautiful and trusting in doing that with me. I'm, I'm not a punster, but chaos to die for. I mean, really, uh, they are. Yes. So, uh, that was a good one. So, yeah, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, Lucas obviously wrote the movie and uh, wrote him for himself. <laughs> Uh, and he's so incredible. Still had to audition. He did have to audition. <laughs> I was really rooting for him. Um, but... Uh, I'm not bitter. He was uh, obviously incredible and is obviously incredible. And I think that I think he even, if I may still so, say so, like surprised himself in, the, in what he had written and what Phoebe had written and ultimately what it ended up being, how deep and rich and funny and true it could be. Um, and obviously Zach is one of my favorite actors since forever, and uh, I've never get to see him be funny. I mean, in real life, Zach is funny. Some would say. Um, but, not me. 
But he's so funny in this, and he is the really the beating heart of this movie. You, I think you start the movie as Gary somewhere along the way. You become Cameron in the movie. Somehow you get ahead of it, and then you become Gary again. And there's just there's such a beautiful moment uh, in the big crack scene, the big crack dance number <laughs> where Zach asks, is this what it's like? It's just like, that's the center of the movie. Lucas, I'm sorry I don't already know, but is have you written other films before or television, or was this your first? Me and Phoebe, um, my co-writer, well, first let me just start. I was showing Phoebe writing samples when she was writing on Euphoria, and she said, you don't know where a comma goes. <laughs> you don't really know structure, but kid, you got something. He's my favorite illiterate writer I've ever met. <laughs> Um, so, me and Phoebe started with a lot of shorts and little, we, um, we did fan fiction for Wattpad. Um, <laughs> Monarch we, Hotel. We wrote, uh, you can still find it online, um, we wrote a lot of fan fiction during quarantine. <laughs> but we, we, we wrote this originally as a writing sample to show that we could write, and we were originally going to write another project, and then when the pandemic happened, it was a perfect contained movie with a couple characters, one location, little budget, and crazy dreams. And God, here we are today. <laughs> We're happy to take um, questions from the audience, if we have any as well. Okay, go ahead. I get it, yeah, no, I appreciate that. Um, I think that the dynamic of, uh, of the two characters is, uh, is something that was really unexpected when I read the script and I, and I hadn't ever done anything like this before, so it was something that was really appealing to me for that reason especially, so far away from any of the other characters I've ever played, and uh, I love that about it and how absolutely psychotic it is <laughs> with something that really leapt off the page. So I guess that has, it has that in common with the side. Milo Ventimiglia actually auditioned to play the part of Cameron, um, and we just thought, maybe not. <laughs> That's good. Uh, I just want to know where I can find the Wattpad thing. It's called Monarch Hotel, is one of them, and Normal, uh, no, Strange Weird, weird people. people. It's like a play on normal people. <laughs> What's up? Monarch Hotel, it's about two actors that fall in love at a hotel. Wonder where we got that from. <laughs> <laughs> and Strange People, a spinoff on Normal People. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Weird People, sorry, Weird People, it's been That's fucking all? Go away. <laughs> Thank you. Brandon Darrow for life, thank you. Yes, Brandon forever. Um, my question is more just like, it was such a visually stunning movie. Like I feel like with comedy, you don't, like there were a lot of just like straight shots. Like the camera work was just really incredible. Where did that kind of come from? Well, I'm gay, so everything has to be stunning. <laughs> but I'm gay, so I can't really operate a camera, so I had to get a straight guy to do it for me. And that is Nate Hertzellers. <laughs> Love you. <laughs> uh, was there anything that uh, had to stay on the editing room floor because it was like too far, too out there? All my Gilmore Girls jokes. <laughs> we like a lot of niche pop culture jokes that we just thought maybe 30 was enough. <laughs> yeah, and they're actually, Phoebe is on the cutting room floor. She, when at the end of the movie, there's supposed to be a shot um, the it's house is long. being sold, and she's the real estate agent, so her picture is on this thing. But we cut it out of the movie because she was too beautiful and took it's away from too me. Too intoxicating, <laughs> I was distracting everyone. So it's like me texting her being like, hey babe, um, 
Um, but yeah, it's I did a lot of character work. I was in character for months, so. <laughs> in the corner. Uh, Yeah, good. Oh, come on, girl. Um, uh, yeah, I think we, we talked a lot about um, the word selfishness and how uh, that is seen as such a negative thing, but ultimately to be yourself and to live the way that you want to live. Gary's had to be selfish. He's had to leave uh, bodies in his wake, people that are mad at him, that may be dead to him, or he may be dead to. So I think there's a lot of metaphorical play that goes along with the, with the uh, violence of identity. Um, ultimately, most of the people that walk in the movie, everyone but Cameron, says that they are uh, a Christian. And I think that's something that it's, I added along with the things that we were making before, which is essentially about how, personally for me, um, gayness becomes your religion in a way. When everyone else rejects you, ultimately gay people take you in and the club, you know, can become uh, your church. So it was all those things. Yes. Hey, um, yeah, congrats. I laughed. I cried. It was incredible. Thank you for telling the story. Um, I was just interested in where um, the inspiration to tell the story, you know, came. I mean, I think everyone can kind of relate to Phoebe loves getting a massage. It's uh, autobiographical. Um, no, we, me and Phoebe, we just watched a ton of rom-coms, and in particular, Pretty Woman was always on repeat for us. And then we watched the documentary about what the original movie was going to be. And then, I mean, I know we're told by our agents not to say this, but we literally wrote it in a weekend. The first draft, the first draft together. We, we are very deliberate. Very deliberate. And we just, I mean, Phoebe honestly took on the role as Gary, and I took on as Cameron, and we just played around. And this was the first draft. It was much more unhinged. There was Task Rabbits involved. There was a lot more people. And then when it got into writer's hands, he really kind of helped, you know, just put it a little bit more grounded, made them a little bit more um, relatable, maybe. <laughs> Maybe a tiny bit less of the, the personal um, inside jokes that we had that we thought would make people laugh. I think a lot of it also came from the fact that we wanted to do something that was like a modern day farce. Um, and that's, I think, where a lot of the comedy was coming from, is just he and I in a room maniacally laughing together. Um, and then writer, very... Um, with a very steady hand, very intelligently and smartly, kind of grounded it with this really beautiful center around morality and who you are and you know selfishness and selflessness. So that's kind of what it became. And how did you connect? Was it just a, you know? Plunger. You all had we met on Plunger. <laughs> <laughs> We've all had sex. Almost a joke. So we all fucked. Okay, go ahead. Oh, we all No, I've known Ryder for a long time, and I, and I've known Zach for a little bit less time, and and and. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna shut up. We all had sex. <laughs> Come on, Janet. Could be more serious, but I'll, I'll just let that go. I mean, I, I am genuinely curious, but go ahead. <laughs> I work very closely with Adam Crystal, who is also here. <laughs> Adam and I also did bonding together, and he is my number one favorite composer in the entire world, and he uh, suffers me 
graciously. <laughs> That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely said, yeah, it really was. I mean, I think we just, we wrote this insane monologue at three o'clock in the morning on your couch. Yeah. And just being in a scene, going toe to toe with Audrey McDonald, Judith White, Simon Rex, Zachary <coughs> King Quinto, and, and hearing the words that we wrote and thought would make each other laugh was surreal. I think one of the most insane moments for me was the, the first day, or one of the first days that I was on set, Judith Light delivered the line, I'm Samantha and I love fucking. Um, and it just kind of, I thought, look mama, I made it. Judith Light also recommended Phoebe a wonderful psychotherapist who... <laughs> My aura is green and it needs healing. <laughs> now this is manager. this is a world premiere, so do we know we do we know the life of this film yet, or is it kind of we're figuring it out right now, or that's a question. <laughs> this is it, baby. Buy Soak it, it up. All right. Buy it, cowards. It's important for you. This is your, that QR code is how you can vote for the audience award. So you take a picture of it. If you like this, you should definitely let people know about it. It's important to make noise in terms of we love launching films from here, and um, you know people need to know about it. So you can you can be involved with that. I appreciate that. I hate losing. <laughs> Any uh, another last question? Okay, in the back. Yes. It was a little creepy. Yeah. I think writers and my only disagreement was around me playing Bill. dead because we, we, we pulled up into the car and you know he had played this section of the song actually on the radio of the car while Lucas was driving me and I was obviously really concerned with holding my breath. And so we, we got to the end of the scene and I was like, writer, is it okay? Like, could you see that I was breathing? And there were a million things going on and he was like, it's really fine, like, you know. And I was like, no, but like, you know, I'm... Is, no, I think I said, I wasn't know? looking at you, babe. <laughs> I think he actually said, no one will be looking at you. <laughs> and then we had a fight and then we made up. And that was the only time we disagreed in the entirety of the shoot. I love you. Good for us, I love you. Um, we worked through it. I just want to say, also, read the song. that The, the song Higher probably gay people really know it, maybe straight people don't, but it's by one of my favorite artists, one of our favorite artists named Vincent. Um, and that song came out when I, when we started working on the script and there was a different song in there and I was listening to Vincent every day and I was like, wow, higher. And the movie is called Down Low. Hold on a fucking second. Um, and luckily Vincent let us have it in the movie and I think it's just the most special thing and I'm so grateful for him for doing it. for us to be able to premiere this film. It's just fantastic. We wish you great, great uh, Thank you, Janet. path on it. Thank you, Janet. How can people, some of you just gave me this advice after the last Q&A. How can people follow you and follow the path of the film? Is there such a thing on social media? Only fans. I, you know, our names are hard to spell, but you can look them up online. I think they're in there. Did you have a program? I don't know. It feels like... Oh, for the movie? I don't know. Big one coming. Big one. Down, Huge. downloadmovie.com, Huge. honey. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. And that will wrap it up for our coverage of the world premiere of Down Low. We've got lots of other videos coming your way, so we'll see you soon.